Hi, welcome along to this video where we're going to be talking about the introduction to the normal distribution. This is the last topic in the Statistics 1 unit and there's a lot of marks in the exam on this topic so this is a very important one. Today we're going to be dealing with the first bullet point there, understanding the use of normal distribution to model a continuous random variable and the use normal distribution tables. The normal distribution is a great model for many naturally occurring phenomena, uh, things like lengths of turtle shells, weights, heights, uh, times taken to do things. If we construct a histogram based on these continuous measurements, we get something like we've got over here. We get most people or turtles or weights or heights around about the middle. We get very few really big, very few really small. In this one here we're looking at weights of a sample of year five students. So we get very sm few small people, very few really tall people. Most people bunched around the middle. Notice that this data is continuous and we can draw this curve over the top of it that pretty much approximates the shape of the distribution. This bell-shaped curve is very familiar to statisticians. It's probably the most important curve in statistics and it's called the normal distribution or Gaussian distribution after um, Carl Gauss. The parameters of this distribution are the mean, mu, and the standard deviation, sigma. Okay, these two Greek letters here. So as we did back in discrete random variables, we've got our random variable x, which has the distribution n for normal, mean, mu, and this second term here we write the variance, not the standard deviation. So that's sigma squared, the variance that goes there. So if we have <clears throat> x has the distribution normal 12, 16, this number here is the variance. So the standard deviation for this distribution would be 4. If you look at all these normal distributions, we know that about 68% of all the values fall within one standard deviation of the mean. About 95% within two standard deviations and 99% of all the values will fall within about three standard deviations from the mean. This applies to all kinds of things, uh, total lengths, times to do a test, weights of dogs, anything. <clears throat> Let's just have a look at a few diagrams here that show how the shape of the normal distribution changes when we change, let's say, the mean. So in this case here we've got a mean of 122. You can see it's centered at 122, standard deviation of 8. This normal distribution in blue has a mean of 135. You can see it's just shifted across, same standard deviation. If we change the standard deviation, the shape of the curve changes. So these three distributions all have a mean of 122, but the standard deviation has changed. As we increase the standard deviation, the curve flattens out more. There's more data within the range underneath the curve. If the standard deviation is smaller, here the, for the green curve, the standard deviation is only 4. You can see the curve is a lot skinnier. The standard normal distribution is a special normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Mathematicians have gone and worked out all the probabilities associated with this curve. Now this is an important curve because the area underneath it is one. So if we look at any areas under the curve, we can relate those directly to probability. So we use a special letter for this distribution, Z, and the values here along the, uh, the axes of down the bottom here are called Z values. So this table which appears in your formula sheet shows all those probabilities which are basically the same as areas underneath the curve. Now notice we've got this special symbol here, phi of z, that is just giving us the area to the left of a certain value. So all these values in the table are from a positive z value all the way down. So the curve is symmetrical so if we look up a z value of 0 that's right there, then the area from there to the left is 0.5. Look up a z value of 1.00, we get 0.8413. So from one standard deviation all the way down, the area under the curve is 0.8413. Really important skill that you've got to have here is to know how to use the table to, to look at probabilities given a particular z value. So I'm going to go through a number of different examples here. Start off with 1.37. So from the table, 1.3, the second decimal place, 7. 0.9147. Pretty easy. It's important to note that since z is a continuous random variable, 
the probability of z being any one exact value is zero. Because theoretically there's infinitely many z values going along here. So to ask the, the question like what's the probability z is an exact value, it's actually zero. Therefore, the probability z is less than one and the probability of z being less than or equal to one are the, are the same thing. So it doesn't matter whether we use a less than sign or a less than or equal to sign, you're just looking at the same value in the table. Okay, let's introduce the third decimal place in the table now. This one we're asked to find the probability of z being between zero and 2.048. Okay, so let's look at the table here. 2.0, so we've got the first decimal place here, second decimal place at the top, 2.04, and our third decimal place are in these values over here. And it says add, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So 2.048, so we look at 8, we go down the column until we reach this figure in the same row as 2.0. Now what we have to do then is add on this here to the last decimal place for this answer. So in reality this value here is 0 0.0004. So my answer would be 0 0.9793 plus 0 0.0004, so 0 0.9797. Okay, part C, we want to know the probability Z is greater than 0.728. Okay, the table, remember, gives us values from a Z value all the way down. Remembering that the area under the curve is 1, to work out this area, we just say 1 minus the area from 0.728 down. And that will give us this area here, or this probability here. So using the third decimal place idea again, 0.72 gives us this value. We go to 8, our third decimal place, and the value here is 0 0.0024. So we have to add 24 on to the last two decimal places there. 0.7642 plus 0 0.0024, giving us 0.7666. So that's the value from there all the way down. So 1 minus that gives me the area from that value up. So the answer is 0.2334. Part D, we've got the probability of Z being less than or equal to negative 1.591. Now you may notice the problem here that the table only deals with positive Z values. So what we have to do is transfer this problem so it's in terms of positive z values. And you can see how I've done that in this diagram. The chance of z being less than this value is the exact same chance of z being greater than this value. And using the symmetry of the graph, I'm just going to work out what's the probability z is 1.591 1 and above. And that's the exact same as this. All right. So as our last example, I'm going to look up the value for 1.591 and subtract it from 1 because that value in our table gives us from there all the way down. Okay, so just doing that in the table, 1.59 and there's 1, so I've got to add on 0 0.0001 and my final answer, 0 0.0558. Part E, probability of Z being greater than negative 0.334 Okay, you can clearly see from the diagram that this value is greater than 0.5. Also, we've got a negative z value, so I have to rethink of this problem in terms of a positive z value. So the equivalent area from being greater than negative 0.334 is being less than positive 0.334. Okay, those two areas will be the exact same. So now I've transferred my problem, so it's now in terms of positive z values. So I'm going to look up 0.334 in the tables. 0.33 gives me this value. Looking up 4 for the last decimal place gives me 15. So I need to add 15 onto the last two decimal places here. 0.6293 plus 0.0015, which gives me 0.6308. Part F, we've got what's the probability between two positive Z values. Easiest way to do this is work out the area from the larger number all the way down, work out the area under the curve from the smaller number all the way down, and subtract those two, which will give you this little area here. So 1.784, show that in the tables, 1.78 gives me this value. Looking up 4, going down to this row, so I need to add on 4 to the last decimal place there. So that first probability is 0.9629. 
Then I've got to look up 0.963. So 0 0.96 is this value. I look up 3 and come down here. It's 8, so I've got to add an 8 onto that last place there. So it's going to be 0 0.8323. Subtract those two to give me the answer, 0 0.1306. You can also round these values to three significant figures and give that answer as 0 0.131. Okay, last one, the trickiest one, we've got a negative z-value and a positive z-value. There is a few ways of doing this. Just let me uh, talk about all three and I'll, I'll just do one method. The first way is to work out the area or the probability from this positive value down to zero. Work out the value from the negative z-value to zero and add those two values together to get the area. That's the way I'm going to do it. Another way of doing it is you could work out the value area from there and up, so the unshaded area there. Work out the area from there down, so look at the two unshaded areas and subtract those two, the sum of those two areas from one, which will leave you with this. Third way, we could find the area to the left of 0.457, that's all the way down and subtract off this tail down here, this little area down here. I think it's a good exercise to go through all three of those. Just let me take you through the first one. So the probability z is between 0 and 0.457. I'll look up 0.457 in the tables. 0.6736 plus 0 0.0025. That gives me 0 0.6761. That's from there all the way down. So I subtract 0.5 off, which gives me this little area from here to here, 0.1761. If I want to work out the area from minus 1.894 to 0, that's just the same as working out the area from 1.894 to 0. So I look up 0 1.8, 1.894, 1.894, 0.9706 plus 0 0.0003, so that gives me 0 0.9709. Remember that's the area from there all the way down, so I've got to subtract 0.5 off that to just give me the area from there to zero. Once I've got those two values, I just add them together to give me the answer, 0.6470.